Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, December 11. Government will be reviewing the process by which licenses are granted for the importation of chicken back and neck. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says going forward, improvements to the system are needed to ensure availability of the product in the local marketplace. As it relates to the whole business of how these licenses are, are distributed, one thing we are clear on is that it is not an incentive compatible distribution. In other words, there are ways to do this which would encourage the persons who are merely seeking to import to also get involved in production. Mr. Holness made these statements yesterday during a virtual function at Jamaica House. He asserted that the government must examine strategies to incentivize the granting of import licenses. The people who are importing should also be the people who are producing. And in that way, it is incentive compatible because if you are producing here, then you are not so likely and you wouldn't have the incentive to always want to be importing. He also addressed the issue of overfishing in Jamaica and highlighted the importance of the parrotfish to the ecosystem and the country's marine health. The, the parrotfish is such a critical element of that ecosystem, which we depend on um, in terms of eating the algae, uh, cleaning off the corals, coral reefs, and creating the sand by virtue of what it produces as waste. Uh, that I think as every single Jamaican should take this into consideration that our consumption of this species of fish could actually have an impact on our environment. The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries will continue to examine ways to shockproof Jamaica's protein supply chain, both for chicken and fish. This may include support for tilapia farms and the potential for growing feedstock for feeding chickens. In the meantime, the Southern Plains Agricultural Development SPAD project, which seeks to increase productivity and access to markets for farmers in St. Catherine and Clarendon, was officially launched on Thursday. Speaking at the virtual ceremony, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the SPAD project was a direct response to the need to repurpose lands previously under sugarcane. The project targets 795 hectares of government-owned lands, which will be leased to farmers in the communities of Amity Hall in St. Catherine and Parnassus in Clarendon. Small and medium-sized farmers are to make up the majority of the beneficiaries, and they will have 495 hectares allocated to them. Some 15% of the space, that is 124 hectares, I gather, will be reserved for women farmers. And 70 acres will be set aside for young farmers. The planned infrastructure works will incorporate climate change measures, such as improved irrigation, drainage and flood control systems, and farm roads expansion and rehabilitation. Under this project, we will dig three wells already. One has already been completed, and we're very happy that in that one well, we have already hit 50% of our targeted daily water supply. The second well is already 90% to completion. And the team tells me that in another few weeks, probably right in time for Christmas, we will hit water. And we expect that we will be almost there in relation to our targeted water supply. And we will commence the digging of the next well in January 2021. The project is being funded through a grant of approximately £17 million from the United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Fund and administered by the Caribbean Development Bank. In other news, the St. Catherine Health Department is currently managing a cluster of COVID-19 cases at the Jamaica Constabulary Force Police Academy. The health department was called to the facility by its medical team, who had observed several persons displaying COVID-19 symptoms. 280 junior and senior recruits and instructors were sampled, and 47 of them, including two instructors, were found to be positive for COVID-19. The health department has since ordered that section of the campus be quarantined and the positive patients isolated for further observation. Medical Officer of Health for St. Catherine, Dr. Francine Prosper Chen, says that in the coming days, the health department will be conducting tests on about 400 instructors, medical and ground staff members who are on campus. Dr. Chen says the department is working with the academy's medical team to monitor the positive cases and ensure that the infection prevention and control measures are keenly observed at the training facility. This cluster of cases has contributed to the increase in cases in Central Village, 
which has now been named as one of the top 20 communities with active COVID-19 cases over the last two weeks. Jamaica will soon benefit from an offender management policy. This after Cabinet gave approval for it to be developed for the Department of Correctional Services. Information Minister Favel Williams told Wednesday's post-Cabinet press briefing that the current offender management system was in need of urgent reform as it only focused on correction and probation. The system is deficient as service provisions are decentralized, disjointed and fragmented in nature. The aftercare or the reintegration support for inmates is practically non-existent and as a result, there is limited progress in improving the rehabilitative outcomes. A number of infant and primary schools across the island are to benefit from improved internet connectivity with the provision of 866 content access point solutions. A contract valued at 433,519 US dollars has been granted to eLearning Jamaica for the provision of devices and the software in partnership with Royal Computers and Accessories. Content access points are designed to serve digital content in classrooms with poor internet connectivity. The schools will be able to load lessons or material onto servers for teachers and students to access. Minister Williams also revealed this information at Wednesday's post-Cabinet press briefing. She said Cabinet also gave approval for the award of a $64.83 million contract to Kingston Bookshop for the procurement and distribution of textbooks. The text will be distributed to students at the secondary level as part of the Ministry's 2020-21 National Textbook Loan Scheme. And finally, 30 outstanding young Jamaicans will be presented with the Prime Minister's National Youth Award for Excellence during a made-for-television ceremony to be aired this Sunday at 5 p.m. Chairman of the Selection Committee for the award, Warren Newby, tells JIS News that more than 200 applications were received for the awards this year. The 30 awardees will be recognized for their contribution in the areas of leadership, international achievement, innovation in science and technology, sport, academics, journalism or e-journalism, entrepreneurship, nation building, youth development, agriculture, environmental protection, and arts and culture. The ceremony will be aired on the Ministry of Education's social media platforms at MOEYI Jamaica and in traditional media. The award, which was established in 1998, is the highest honor bestowed upon Jamaican young people who have achieved eminent national and international distinction. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.